Well, right now I think you've seen a particularly good first quarter relative to expectations. We had a very messy first quarter in terms of what was going on with the government shutdown. We had a lot of data issues and a lot of anomalies due to what happened in December in terms of the market. Now we're seeing a return to a much better environment in the second quarter and potentially beyond when we expect that revenues will continue to rise and earnings will actually beat expectations. So between now and the end of the year, we can imagine that markets are going to be up another five plus percent and that earnings and revenues will follow. You mentioned uh, earlier that the consumer was you know, feeling positively in the U.S. We think the same is true. And so we see a particularly good environment, if not particularly exciting in terms of growth for the economy for the remainder of the year. So we're, uh, we're remaining fully invested and, uh, and, and pretty, pretty bullish in that environment. Within that bullish outlook, David, where do you think the leadership will come from? We're wrapping up April here. Financials are actually the standout performers, but so far for the year, it's still technology and consumer discretionary. Where do you want to be? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, you've seen a pretty good run on the financials so far because the interest rate curve has changed and their ability to make net interest income has gone up. Uh, and technology, of course, is on an extraordinary tear. There are other areas in the market where you can see that growth. Healthcare, as you just mentioned, being one of those. We think that's very fairly valued, gives you good defensive protection. And we want clients to rotate into more you know, high quality names and away from some of the riskier of the markets, which in 2020 could be more affected if things slow down. So that's really what our strategy is, safeguard assets and to basically you know, go with growth. We don't think value is going to turn around anytime soon. Um, the, the market clearly favors those companies that continue to grow in a, in a low interest rate environment with, with, with a reasonable amount of consumer spending. Uh, Rick, welcome back. We, we missed you yesterday. And to David's point on the topic of yields, it's, it's been a volatile couple of days. Uh, the tenure has been all over the place. What, what's been happening there? Well, I, I think the interesting uh, aspect to walk away with watching the fixed income treasury curve in particular is that, you know, three months to tens, twos to tens, they've steepened. And, and it's not like they've steepened a lot, but it's important that we've seen a reversal of the inversion process to some extent. And I think that's very critical. As for how nervous everyone seems to get, when interest rates seem to kind of buck the major trend of the equity markets, I can totally relate to that. But there are so many turnstiles that are keeping rates down. And yes, even today, when you looked at consumer confidence versus Chicago PMI, there's lots of data that isn't necessarily at the optimum levels uh, that they once were, whether in 2017 or in 2018. But I think the most important aspect to walk away with on interest rates is that we don't have a uh, heated up uh, action going on with regard to pricing and inflation. We have plenty of growth, even though we could debate it's not the best growth in the last 24 months. I don't see anything impeding what we see in the marketplace, and I even think the dollar isn't going to fall much farther. Just remember this, Wilf. How many analysts told you three weeks ago the first quarter would be 3.2? I can answer that for you. Zero. There's something to be learned by that. Lots of smart people can take lots of data inputs, but they don't necessarily give you the right output. Sometimes we have to leave that to the market participants.